All right, guys, real quick, let's talk, okay? I want to talk to you about this engine right here. This is the one I got my helper doing. This is his first 3.6 Pentastar, and it happens to be a Gen 2, okay? No EGR cooler. Now, here's the deal. I had to explain to him how even if the engine, we noticed and recognized the ticking noise when he drove it in. All right, I told him to get a good listen to that so you can be accustomed to how they sound. However, in some cases, you may not, in fact, need a camshaft. Here's my point. All right, y'all see this exhaust camshaft on bank one. All right, now I had him check all these rock arms. You see this? This is tight. This is tight. This is tight. No, this one's not tight. All right, y'all hear that? See that? Now I want you to take a look at this cam load. You see that? Do you see that? It was starting. It was. It's. It, it, that's not even a scratch. That's just. It's not even, yes, guys, this camshaft is reusable, okay? This is what I want to alert you to. If you catch these Pentastar ticking jobs early, you may not. You can see the rock arm has failed. The bearing has failed. There's some needle bearings missing in there. But, hear that? That is the ticking noise. However, save the cam. You know why? Because they caught it early. Okay, yeah. So I suggest as soon as you hear that ticking noise, get it fixed ASAP so you won't need a $300 camshaft. These camshafts are $300 a piece. You got that kind of money to waste? No. Don't waste your money on camshafts. Spend it on something else. Show me where you're at. You just got the valve covers off. Do you see, have you recognized where the ticking coming from? You know how to check for ticking? Well, Man, this is it's it's okay to hear the ticking, but we want to verify where exactly was the ticking coming from. So come over here, and we're gonna inspect. That's a terrible feeling to hear a ticking and not verify. So what we're gonna do is a uh, ticking noise. The ticking noise on this engine, Pentastar, comes from the rock arms. So All what right. you need to do is feel every one of these rock arms. Okay. And see if uh, see if any loose that could cause that. Okay. They would usually like grab them, uh, because if if the lobe, you know how a camshaft work, it, it's designed to rotate, yeah. and open and close the valves. Mm -hmm. But if the actual lobe is on that rock on, that's an invalid test. So what you should do is grab the ones that. Like for instance, this one right here, yeah. this lobe is pointed that way, so it's not on the rocker. Okay. So take your fingers like this, grab like this, and just go up and down. Feel, you gotta go around it. Oh, like this? Yeah. That feels look good. That's tight to me. I mean, if it's. Well, if it's moving any, ticking any, that's where your noise coming from. Oh, is this that? Let me see. This one right it, now also look at a dead another day giveaway is a scratch on the actual load yeah the wear marks yeah the scratch it's got to be scratched into because that's where but you oh, can yeah. feel this one. it's not even that. yeah i can which one was you doing this one right here like you hear it let me see something okay you going like this yeah. you got to go up and down oh, okay. yeah just like uh testing the hub bearings on a on a wheel okay no. But the okay. first thing is uh, looking the visual. Like I say, look at all the camshaft, or even on that side too. This is bank one. Yeah. Look at all the camshaft. If you see all the lobes, if you see scratches on the outside, that's your dead giveaway. So take a look at that side and see if you see any scratches on the lobe. Okay, you may in fact dodge the bullet as far as needing a cam. Now, this is what we got to do in order to properly check the ones that's on the lobe. Right. We got to rotate the engine. Mm -hmm. So. You check, hand check all the ones that the lobe is not on. Right. Not all of them gonna be, but then after you're done, you rotate the engine to take the lobe off the remaining other ones, mm -hmm. and then check those. So, so we'll grab a, uh, we're gonna, uh, don't never turn a engine over by the camshaft. Yeah, yeah. Always use the crankshaft. Um, so when the cam lobe isn't on the rock arm, that's when it's pointed to the side? Either pointed up, or side it just can't be directly on the rock arm okay. because there's no way to feel that's no way the test is invalid right. or the feel of what you're feeling for is going to be inaccurate right. All right. so ro rotate it over until you move off those other remaining loads so what you say about that silver stuff on the uh yeah oh this one bad too 
Yeah, that's like little, on, on, on all of them. Yeah, that means little. I think a, this guy named Tom Cook on the internet enlightened me on that. It's powdered metal shavings. That makes sense. Yeah, because this is magnetic. Mm -hmm. Inside that valve cover, these little rock arms getting chewed up, camshafts getting chewed up. Mm -hmm. It's all going to be attracted to those. Uh, I mean, I figured just due to some fact that, well, you know, silver. You know, silver is usually never good. So. Powdered metal shavings. You don't have to press down on it hard, right? Like if it's like a loose no, uh, rock arm, you know like, okay, you know, this is loose basically. Yeah. Oh, not that one. See, not because I don't, I don't see camshaft damage. Yeah. We might get lucky. Sometimes if you catch it early enough, which it looks like what we did, mm -hmm. you're not going to have camshaft damage. But you will have a failed rock arm. Mm -hmm. In that case, you might not see it until you get them all off. Because we actually heard the ticket. Alright, do this. Turn the camshaft, or turn the crankshaft enough to put the engine in time. We're going to top dead center up. Okay. You know where the timing marks at? And how they're supposed to... They're different from bank one and bank right two. Yeah. So you got an oh. error right there. And you got an error right here. Oh, wow. What we're doing is trying to bring... It's top dead center cylinder one top dead center up before you disassemble an engine uh you need to bring up cylinder one first wow. so we're getting ready to tear this all apart because there's no mark on the crankshaft all the marks are on the camshaft back in the day we used to have a mark on the crankshaft that will signify top dead center this right. is when we was using timing lights i don't know if you ever heard of a timing light we had to <laughs> yeah we would fly, flash a light down here yeah. The, to put the engine in time, everything now is controlled by a computer. But right. before, there was a mark on the crankshaft that was signal. That's what top dead center is. Right. And we had a distributor we would turn to put it in time. But now everything is controlled by the computer. Mm -hmm. So you're getting close. Start paying attention where you at. Yeah. Oh, the arrows. I see them. Yeah. And the other side have the two lines. So this side gets the arrow. Bank two get the arrow. Yeah, because you know we're getting close because these slits right here are showing up. Yeah. And what's going on over there? There's two lines. Yeah. So technically, bank one, where uh, cylinder one is all the way up, top dead center. Where's cylinder one? Cylinder one's in the front. In the front, yeah. right? On which bank? Uh, it's a V engine, so it right. means it's a bank. Hey, if it's the, is it the same like how it's like our side, <coughs> side, your side on the passenger side? Well, it depends on the car maker or the engine builder. But the, uh, another way to remember what we talked about the cylinder closest to the front gonna be cylinder one. Yeah, I know that. So by looking at that, where you think cylinder one at? This one. Yeah. All right. So we about to disassemble it, but we got some more to do because we want to make we're not using these. We replacing these cam we don't phasers. Are we reusing it then? Then we need to mark them. Okay. So get some brake cleaner. We're gonna clean this up and we're gonna put a mark on this chain to signify where it go doing reassemble. So yeah. All right, here's your pen. We're going to use this to mark. Because we are reusing these phasers, we want them back in the exact same spot. Mm -hmm. Once you assure top dead center, cylinder one is at, is at top dead center, uh, then you're ready to mark it because we're about to disassemble it. Right. All right, we got that cleaned up. We're going to mark uh, so we can make, dis uh, make assembly easy or make reassembly easy. So, Mark, put them in a yellow mark. Right there in the slit and on the chain. It's all going to make sense when we're going back together. You squeezing that while you're right on it? Big old sloppy mark. Because there's 12 links between each cam phaser. 12 links? Yeah, if you was to... Like, if you get lost and you didn't mark it, yeah. what we do is just count the links. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, oh. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, yeah. yeah mark, but we, we're not going to have to do that because we're marking it, right? Yeah. We're smarter than that. Do all four, and then we're going to disassemble this mug. So, you know what size torque bits on those caps, right? The T30. But you got to grab a socket. Do both sides. Socket for uh, these? Yeah, I got the socket. It's two. And then we're going to get this. Big, that's what it is. Uh, normally, <laughs> see, that's why I don't like, I, I can't, I, don't, I can't really, I don't like training this way because I don't use tools, but you need to know how to use the tool. Right. Yeah. Because what we're going to do is, uh, yeah, adjust that to fit the cam, put my special tool on the. You 
it's a one man show, so you're gonna but you're gonna be holding both twos. Yeah, right. yeah, you don't want the engine to turn while you're doing that. That's why we got a wrench on the camshaft. Yeah. So we're gonna hold that with one hand and turn with the other. We're gonna need all of them. Uh actually just one, because we're gonna reuse those. So one on each head, that is. So take one over there. All. all right, pull that boat out of there. Now that boat is actually called an oil control valve. It doubles as a... An, uh, a what? It doubles. It's an oil control valve. An oil control valve. Yeah. Okay. It doubles as the boat that holds the camshaft. So just pull it out and set it aside. And right. we're going to... You're supposed to use a special tool, but I'm going to explain the special tools to you on right. reassemble. Uh, just set it right there for right now. Because I need you to take this and tap this phaser off. We finna knock the engine out of time. Okay. Then we can disassemble. We're gonna do bank one first. So you think Just this? doop, 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 tap it up. All right, you are now out of time. All right. Yeah, like I say, we'll go over the special two when we put it back together. You know what these are, oil gallery plugs? No. If these uh, have been known to work their way loose. Really? Yeah, if they loose, you will lose oil pressure. This is a variable valve timing engine, which right. means oil pressure as well as the oil level. Look, it's loose. <laughs> wow! <laughs> it didn't look loose at all. So actually, this could cause a lot of problems. Yeah. Like stall out, all kinds of issues. It's two of them. Is this one? Yeah, I see that one. That one's on there pretty good. This one. So they just, they, you said they worked there? They way worked there with loose. We're going to take them out, clean them up, and put Loctite on them so they won't right. come back. So, okay, wait, wait, wait. What are they called again? Oil gallery plugs. Oil gallery Oil plugs. Oil gallery plugs. And their purpose is to... I don't know what their purpose is. What is their purpose? Well, I mean, the oil pump is the heart and soul of the lubrication system. Right. So it's going to pump oil up here to disperse, feed this. None of this ever need to be dry. Right. All right. So now the oil has to go through a galley to get to each, each rocker. Right. All right. So you got to have a way to cap it off. So they use these plugs to cap this off. Right. But if these are loose, oil will escape lowering your oil pressure as well as lowering your oil distribution wow. so you won't lube this up real good okay. so but these like i said i don't know what they did at the factory but they have been known to walk out and can cause all your problems yeah. with low oil pressure you're gonna run bad okay you're gonna have this is what you take really technically supposed to check oil pressure but yeah so we'll deal with that once we get the cam off all right so you got this which, which camshaft is this? What do you mean which camshaft? It's a dual overhead cam engine, right? Right. Dual mean two. Yeah. So as opposed to the cam and block. V engine, it's still a V engine, but some V engines they use single overhead cam dual. or dual overhead cam. This yeah. is dual overhead cam engine. All right, on one side, what you mean you're confused by right. which cams? Oh, the dual overhead cam engine. Uh, You're gonna have, if it's dual, you and you got a, do you have an intake side and an exhaust side, right? You know how a gasoline combustion engine work, right? Well, yeah, Split, I mean, bam, boom, kaboom, suck. I yeah. can't think of it, but. All right, this is dual cams on this head. Mm -hmm. One side, once, okay, I'm going to do it this way. One, you're going to have an intake and an exhaust cam on every head. Which one you think is the intake cam and the exhaust cam? I think these would be the intake being as they closer to the intake. Boom! That's it. Yeah. All right. And the other side, obviously, and the exhaust. The, it controls the exhaust valves. Mm -hmm. When it opens and closes, the exhaust is going out. Right. Tailpipe through the pipe. So we're going to start with the intake camshaft. Okay. So these are all torque. T30, yeah. and don't put a damn impact on these. D crack them open with your ratchet. Yeah, and then you can go speed all you want, but yeah. crack, crack them open first. And the way you take things off is you start outside and work your way in. As opposed to putting it on, you start inside and work your way out. Mm. So it'll stay flat. All right. So let's get the intake. Hell, just doing both. Intake and exhaust cam off. And we're going to get to those rock arms. And yeah, don't forget this these cam on both heads. Check these every time you got the valve cover off. That's how prone it is to come loose. But yeah, go ahead and get that camshaft off. There we go. All right. Grab one of them rock arms. Let me see some. Oh. Yeah, so feel it with the other hand. So turn it sideways. What you, all you're trying to do is feel if it's loose. Not if it roll. Feel if it's loose. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I mean, that shit you don't feel that? So that was a good one. So, yeah. So that's how you check them all. But since we about oh, to replace right. them all. It don't really matter then. Yeah. We're about to replace them all. But it still give you a peace of mind to find out which one was making the noise. Right. Well, we know it came in ticking. But, right. yeah. So that's the beginning part of the ticking job. It was 3-6 Pentastar. Uh, all right. He going to be a ticking job pro when I'm done with him. I, yeah, I gotta go, man. I'm out of time. Plus, my phone is out of memory. <laughs> Y'all stay tuned.